a Wikividi Documentaries production. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Enjoy. Charles, Prince of Wales Charles, Prince of Wales is the heir apparent to the British throne as the eldest child of Queen Elizabeth II. He has been Duke of Cornwall and Duke of Rothsey since 1952, and is the oldest and longest-serving heir apparent in British history. He is also the longest-serving Prince of Wales, having held that title since 1958. Charles was born at Buckingham Palace as the first grandchild of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. He was educated at Cheam and Gordonstone schools, which his father, Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, had attended as a child, as well as the Timbertop campus of Geelong Grammar School in Victoria, Australia. After earning a Bachelor of Arts degree from Trinity College, Cambridge, Charles served in the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy from 1971 to 1976. In 1981, he married Lady Diana Spencer, and they had two sons, Prince William later to become Duke of Cambridge, and Prince Harry later to become Duke of Sussex. In 1996, the couple divorced following well-publicized extramarital affairs by both parties. Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris the following year. In 2005, Charles married longtime girlfriend Camilla Parker Bowles. Charles founded the Prince's Trust in 1976, sponsors the Prince's Charities, and is patron of many other charities and the arts. He is an environmentalist who raises awareness of organic farming and climate change and has received awards and recognition from environmental groups. His support for alternative medicine, including homeopathy, has been criticized by some in the medical community. Charles has been outspoken on the role of architecture in society and the conservation of historic buildings. He created Poundbury, an experimental new town based on his preferences. He has authored a number of books, including A Vision of Britain, A Personal View of Architecture in 1989, and the children's book The Old Man of Loch Nagar in 1980. Early Life and Education Prince Charles was born at Buckingham Palace in London on 14 November 1948, at 9.14 p.m., the first child of Princess Elizabeth, Duchess of Edinburgh, and Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, and first grandchild of King George VI and Queen Elizabeth. He was baptized in the palace's music room by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Geoffrey Fisher, on 15 December 1948. The death of his grandfather, and the accession of his mother as Queen Elizabeth II in 1952 made Charles her heir apparent. As the monarch's eldest son, he automatically took the titles Duke of Cornwall, Duke of Rothsey, Earl of Carrick, Baron of Renfrew, Lord of the Isles and Prince and Great Steward of Scotland. Charles attended his mother's coronation at Westminster Abbey on 2 June 1953, as was customary for upper-class children at the time, a governess. Catherine Peebles, was appointed and undertook his education between the ages of five and eight. Buckingham Palace announced in 1955 that Charles would attend school rather than have a private tutor, making him the first heir apparent ever to be educated in that manner. Charles attended Hill House School in West London. He did not receive preferential treatment from the school's founder and then head, Stuart Tonend, who advised the Queen to have Charles train in football because the boys were never deferential to anyone on the football field. Charles then attended two of his father's former schools, Sheen Preparatory School in Berkshire, England, followed by Gordonstone in the northeast of Scotland. Though he reportedly characterized the latter school, noted for its especially rigorous curriculum, as, called it's in kilts, Charles subsequently praised Gordonstone, stating it had taught him, a great deal about myself and my own abilities and disabilities. It taught me to accept challenges and take the initiative. In a 1975 interview, he said he was glad he had attended Gordonstone and that the toughness of the place was much exaggerated. He spent two terms in 1966 at the Timbertop campus of Geelong Grammar School in Victoria, Australia, during which time he visited Papua New Guinea on a school trip with his history tutor, Michael Collins Purse. In 1973, Charles described his time at Timbertop as the most enjoyable part of his whole education. Upon his return to Gordonstone, Charles emulated his father in becoming head boy. 
He left in 1967, with six GCEO levels and two A levels in history and French, at grades B and C respectively. On his early education, Charles later remarked, I didn't enjoy school as much as I might have, but that was only because I'm happier at home than anywhere else. Charles broke royal tradition a second time when he proceeded straight to university after his A-levels, rather than joining the British Armed Forces. In October 1967, he was admitted to Trinity College, Cambridge, where he read anthropology, archaeology, and history. During his second year, Charles attended the University College of Wales in Aberystwyth, studying Welsh history and language for a term. He graduated from Cambridge with a 2-2 Bachelor of Arts on 23 June 1970, the first heir apparent to earn a university degree. On 2 August 1975, he was awarded a Master of Arts degree from Cambridge, in accordance with the university's practice. Investiture Charles was created Prince of Wales and Earl of Chester on 26 July 1958 though his investiture was not held until 1 July 1969, when he was crowned by his mother in a televised ceremony held at Carnarvon Castle. He took his seat in the House of Lords in 1970, and he made his maiden speech at a debate in June 1974, becoming the first royal to speak in the Lords since his great-great-grandfather, later Edward VII, also speaking as Prince of Wales, in 1884. Charles began to take on more public duties, founding the Prince's Trust in 1976, and traveling to the United States in 1981. In the mid-1970s, the Prince expressed an interest in serving as Governor-General of Australia, at the suggestion of Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Fraser, but, because of a lack of public enthusiasm nothing came of the proposal. Charles accepted the decision, if not without some regret. He said, so. What are you supposed to think when you are prepared to do something to help and you are just told you're not wanted? Charles is the longest-serving Prince of Wales, having surpassed the record held by Edward VII on 9 September 2017. He is the oldest and longest-serving British heir apparent, the longest-serving Duke of Cornwall, and the longest-serving Duke of Rothsey. If he became monarch at present he would be the oldest person to do so. The record holder is William IV who was 64 when he became king in 1830. Military training and career Charles followed family tradition when he served in the Royal Air Force and Royal Navy. During his second year at Cambridge, he requested and received Royal Air Force training. On 8 March 1971, he flew himself to the Royal Air Force College Cranwell to train as a jet pilot. After the passing out parade that September, he embarked on a naval career and enrolled in a six-week course at the Royal Naval College Dartmouth. He then served on the guided missile destroyer and the frigates and, in 1974, he qualified as a helicopter pilot at Rasjovilton, and then joined 845 Naval Air Squadron, operating from. On 9 February 1976, he took command of the coastal minehunter for his last ten months of active service in the Navy. He learned to fly on a chipmunk basic pilot trainer, a BAC Jet Provost Jet Trainer, and a Beagle Bassett Multi-Engine Trainer. He then regularly flew the Hawker Sidley Endover, Westland Wessex, and Bay 146 aircraft of the Queen's flight until he gave up flying after crashing the Bay 146 in the Hebrides in 1994. Early Romances In his youth, Charles was amorously linked to a number of women. His great-uncle Lord Mountbatten advised him in a case like yours, the man should sow his wild oats and have as many affairs as he can before settling down, but for a wife he should choose a suitable, attractive, and sweet-charactered girl before she has met anyone else she might fall for. It is disturbing for women to have experiences if they have to remain on a pedestal after marriage. Charles' girlfriends include a Georgiana Russell, the daughter of the British ambassador to Spain, Lady Jane Wellesley the daughter of the 8th Duke of Wellington, Davina Sheffield, Lady Sarah Spencer, and Camilla Shand, who later became his second wife and Duchess of Cornwall. Early in 1974, Mountbatten began corresponding with Charles about a potential marriage to Amanda Natchbull, who was Mountbatten's granddaughter. Charles wrote to Amanda's mother, Lady Brabourne, who was also his godmother, 
expressing interest in her daughter, to which she replied approvingly, though she suggested that a courtship with the not yet 17-year-old girl was premature. Four years later, Mountbatten arranged for Amanda and himself to accompany Charles on his 1980 tour of India. Both fathers, however, objected. Philip feared that Charles would be eclipsed by his famous uncle. While Lord Brabourne warned that a joint visit would concentrate media attention on the cousins before they could decide on becoming a couple. However, in August 1979, before Charles would depart alone for India, Mountbatten was killed by the IRA. When Charles returned, he proposed to Amanda, but in addition to her grandfather, she had lost her paternal grandmother and youngest brother Nicholas in the bomb attack, and was now reluctant to join the royal family. In June 1980, Charles officially turned down Chevening House, placed at his disposal since 1974, as his future residence. Chevening, a stately home in Kent, was bequeathed, along with an endowment, to the crown by the last Earl Stanhope, Amanda's childless great-uncle, in the hope that Charles would eventually occupy it. In 1977, a newspaper report mistakenly announced his engagement to Princess Marie Astrid of Luxembourg marriage to Lady Diana Spencer. Charles first met Lady Diana Spencer in 1977 while he was visiting her home, Althorpe. He was the companion of her elder sister, Sarah, and did not consider Diana romantically until mid-1980. While they were sitting together on a bale of hay at a friend's barbecue in July, he mentioned Mountbatten's death, to which Diana replied that Charles had looked forlorn and in need of care during his uncle's funeral. Soon, according to Charles' chosen biographer, Jonathan Dimbleby, without any apparent surge in feeling, he began to think seriously of her as a potential bride, and she accompanied Charles on visits to Balmoral Castle and Sandringham House. Charles' cousin Norton Latchbull and his wife told Charles that Diana appeared awestruck by his position and that he did not seem to be in love with her. Meanwhile, the couple's continuing courtship attracted intense attention from the press and paparazzi. When Prince Philip told him that the media speculation would injure Diana's reputation if Charles did not come to a decision about marrying her soon, and realizing that she was a suitable royal bride, Charles construed his father's advice as a warning to proceed without further delay. Prince Charles proposed to Diana in February 1981. She accepted and they married in St. Paul's Cathedral on 29 July of that year. Upon his marriage, Charles reduced his voluntary tax contribution from the profits generated by the Duchy of Cornwall from 50% to 25%. The couple lived at Kensington Palace and at Highgrove House, near Tetbury, and had two children, Princes William and Henry. Charles set a precedent by being the first royal father to be present at his children's births. Persistent suggestions that Harry's father is not Charles, but James Hewitt, with whom Diana had an affair, have been based on a physical similarity between Hewitt and Harry. However, Harry had already been born by the time the affair between Hewitt and Diana began. Separation and Divorce Within five years, the marriage was in trouble due to the couple's incompatibility and near 13-year age difference Diana's concern about Charles' previous girlfriend, Camilla Shand was also visible, and damaging to their marriage. Their evident discomfort in each other's company led to them being dubbed, the Glums, by the press. Diana exposed Charles' affair with Camilla in a book by Andrew Morton, Diana, Her True Story. Audio tapes of her own extramarital flirtations also surfaced. In December 1992, British Prime Minister John Major announced the couple's formal separation in Parliament. Earlier that year, the British press had published transcripts of a passionate bug telephone conversation between Charles and Camilla from 1989. Prince Charles sought public understanding via a televised interview with Jonathan Dimbleby on 29 June 1994. In the interview, he confirmed his own extramarital affair with Camilla, saying that he had rekindled their association in 1986 only after his marriage to Diana had irretrievably broken down. Charles and Diana divorced on 28 August 1996. Diana was killed in a car crash in Paris on 31 August of the following year. Charles flew to Paris with Diana's sisters to accompany her body back to Britain. Marriage to Camilla Parker Bowles 
The engagement of Charles and Camilla Parker Bowles was announced on 10 February 2005. He presented her with an engagement ring that had belonged to his grandmother. The Queen's consent to the marriage was recorded in a Privy Council meeting on 2 March. In Canada, the Department of Justice announced its decision that the Queen's Privy Council for Canada was not required to meet to give its consent to the marriage, as the union would not result in offspring and would have no impact on the succession to the Canadian throne. Charles was the only member of the royal family to have a civil rather than a church wedding in England. Government documents from the 1950s and 1960s, published by the BBC, stated that such a marriage was illegal, though these were dismissed by Charles' spokesman, and explained to be obsolete by the sitting government. The marriage was scheduled to take place in a civil ceremony at Windsor Castle with a subsequent religious blessing at St. George's Chapel. The venue was subsequently changed to Windsor Guildhall. Because a civil marriage at Windsor Castle would oblige the venue to be available to anyone who wished to be married there, four days before the wedding. The originally scheduled date of 8 April was postponed until the following day in order to allow Charles and some of the invited dignitaries to attend the funeral of Pope John Paul II. Charles' parents did not attend the civil marriage ceremony. The Queen's reluctance to attend probably arose from her position as Supreme Governor of the Church of England. The Queen and Duke of Edinburgh did attend the service of blessing and later held a reception for the newlyweds at Windsor Castle. The Blessing, by the Archbishop of Canterbury, Rowan Williams, at St. George's Chapel, Windsor Castle, was televised. Philanthropy and Charity Since founding the Prince's Trust in 1976, Charles has established 16 more charitable organizations, and now serves as president of all of those. Together, these form a loose alliance called the Prince's Charities, which describes itself as the largest multi-cause charitable enterprise in the United Kingdom, raising over £100 million annually, and is active across a broad range of areas including education and young people, environmental sustainability, the built environment, responsible business and enterprise and international. In 2010, the Prince's Charities Canada was established in a similar fashion to its namesake in the UK. Charles is also patron of over 350 other charities and organizations, and carries out duties related to these throughout the Commonwealth realms. For example, he uses his tours of Canada as a way to help draw attention to youth, the disabled, the environment, the arts, medicine, the elderly, heritage conservation, and education. In Canada, Charles has supported humanitarian projects. Along with his two sons, he took part in ceremonies that marked the 1998 International Day for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Charles has also set up the Prince's Charities Australia, which is based in Melbourne, Victoria. The Prince's Charities Australia is to provide a coordinating presence for the Prince of Wales' Australian and international charitable endeavours Charles was one of the first world leaders to express strong concerns about the human rights record of Romanian dictator Nicolae Ceausescu, initiating objections in the international arena, and subsequently supported the FARA Foundation, a charity for Romanian orphans and abandoned children. In 2013, Charles donated an unspecified sum of money to the British Red Cross Syria Crisis Appeal and Dexyria Appeal which is run by 14 British charities to help victims of the Syrian civil war. According to The Guardian, it is believed that after turning 65 years old in 2013, Charles donated his state pension to an unnamed charity that supports elderly people. In March 2014, Charles arranged for 5 million measles rubella vaccinations for children in the Philippines on the outbreak of measles in Southeast Asia. According to Clarence House, Charles was affected by news of the damage caused by Typhoon Yolanda in 2013. International Health Partners, of which he has been patron since 2004, sent the vaccines, which are believed to protect 5 million children below the age of 5 from measles. Brought to you by Wikivideo Documentaries. Would you like to know more?